inside the Bears Den, and we're glad to have you with us. It was championship Saturday, and it turned into a championship season as the Miles Golden Bears are your 2024 SIAC champions. Glad to have you with us. I'm A.A. Moore, Coach Shade. He had a ton of responsibility. He's everywhere, and he's been everywhere for this Golden Bears program, taking him from one to nine the first season that he was here to now nine and two and a conference championship team. We're going to look at all the highlights from this ball game in a moment, but let's just kind of talk about a little of why we are here and why we are looking at the SIAC champions in the Miles Golden Bears. This team started out 0-2 tough one-point loss against West Alabama, and then you lose 24-3 to to Alabama State. You get a bye week, and next thing you know, this spaceship took off nine consecutive wins. It is now the new school record for a single-season streak as far as consecutive wins. Nine and two overall, the nine wins, ties the school record for most wins in any season. That's big-time moves over here in Fairfield for the Golden Bears and that defense, the defense was excellent today. It's been excellent all season. Eight turnovers, six interceptions. That goes with the 25 they had coming into the game. They were already one of the top teams at taking away the football. They've moved to the top and it didn't matter how many passing yards that David Wright and Clark Atlanta was able to put up. It was not enough as Miles got the big 53-25 win over the Panthers. When we come back, we'll start looking at some of the highlights from this championship matchup. Boy, it was quite a matchup, but it, it turned very quickly. And you'll see that when we come back. You're watching Inside the Bears Den. Back inside the Bears Den, I found somebody. It wasn't just this beautiful trophy right here. The head coach, the championship head coach, the coach of the year in the SIAC, head coach Sam Shade. And coach, I know you feel ecstatic that you're standing here with this trophy right now. Talk a little bit about how you're feeling after winning your first SIAC championship. Man, I'm feeling great and just excited for everybody involved, man. Everybody that's been involved in our success Man, our president, Dr. Bobby Knight, our athletic director, Fred Watson, the administration here at, at Miles, the, the student body, the coaching staff, and the players, man. E everybody had a, had a hand in it. Everybody had a hand in our success in us winning this trophy and looking forward to the playoffs. Well, you know, they talked a lot about, well, it's hard to beat a team twice. And some of your guys, they just were like, you know, we didn't look at it that way. It was like seeing them for the first time again. Talk about why you instilled that particular attitude amongst your guys this week. I, I just told the guys, man, uh, when I played pro ball, we played four teams twice a year in our division. So I, I didn't feel like, you, you know, that was the case. People say that. But bottom line was this. They knew our team. Our team knew their team. So really, you could have took the coaches out of it. This, this was about the players. The players got it done today. It was all about the players, so all the credit goes to the players today. The players made the plays right from the beginning. It was on the defensive side of the ball. Miles has got 25 forced turnovers, which is top five in Division Two, and they came right out and made that play again. Talk about first to Michael Rogers on the first play, man. He got in the backfield so quick, it was almost like you all aren't going to run the football on us. Talk about his his play in the well, ball game. Well, well, well Jamaica kind of had a little stuff on his mind. I, I thought he got snubbed. Thought he should have been at least first team all conference. Hey, if, if not, you know, right up there with LaShawn Young, uh, maybe they could have split the defensive player of the year. But his, he, he just had a great mindset coming in today, into today, just wanting to get it done and show the nation the type of player he was. And then a couple plays later, you get the big play. It's Keith Green that gets in there, makes that hit, and all of a sudden that ball is coming up, and it's Will Hardy who's the Johnny on the spot, and he was able to turn it for six. Man, uh, Keith Green, can't say enough. True freshman still making plays for us late in the season, and I'm so proud of William Hardy on the type of uh, – 
the, the type of season he's had, and he put the work in, man. He really put the work in to have the success that he's had. So I'm, I'm really proud of both of those guys. And, and, and that's what we've been, as a defense, we've just been very opportunistic and just making plays, getting the ball and making plays for, for our team. And I'm, I'm just, just happy for those guys. Well, you knew they were going to throw the football. That's what Clark Atlanta does. They still ended up with well over 300 yards. David Wright, the, uh, the MVP of the SIAC here in right. 2024. But you know you're what you're getting, but it's kind of playing to your strength when you got a team that wants to throw the ball a lot. Yes, I, I feel like it, it, it was. And, and I want to I want to say much respect for Clark Atlanta, Coach Teddy Keaton, uh, man, David Wright. They, they just do a great job. And I always talk about that. David Wright's going to get his, and, and he did. But hats out to, to our defense. We did a great job of limiting things and causing turnovers, just like we did in the first game. Like you were able to race out 23-0, man. That doesn't happen. You even, I think, maybe shook them up a little bit. They had the bad snap on the punt that ended up kicking out of the end zone. Everything seemed like it was rolling for your team early. But, man, when you get out to those kind of leads, man, that's that's got to be hard trying to keep people in the ball game a little bit. Well, we went up 23 to nothing, and we have that that extra point to PAT, and we get a personal foul that pushes up pushes us back where we got to kick off from the 20. I felt like that was a momentum swing. I, I felt like we can't afford, if we're going to be the type of team we want to be, we can't afford to have costly penalties like that. And it, it that was a shift in the momentum after that because we had to kick off with a long field. They get a good return, and and they had momentum. Well, Clark Atlanta was able to get back into the ball game. They get that touchdown on. on big play and go up deep and up top and you know the guys just seem like hey you know we're still okay and in fact we were able to talk to Jeremiah Hudson Davis and talk about how that defensive secondary was able to play against this aerial assault that Clark Atlanta brings let's hear what Jeremiah had to say after the ball game Jeremiah Hudson Davis the man with all the names he also had all the interceptions today at least enough of them today to quell a couple of uh, drives for Clark Atlanta you had two picks uh, talk about what you saw from David Wright that allowed you and your teammates to get in position to make those plays. Um, it's all about just trusting my guys. Um, coach always talking about being selfless, being a disciplined defense. Um, and he always preached to us making turnovers. Um, in practice, he always gives us a, a limit, four turnovers every practice. And, um, just that mentality as a defense, as a player, just sticking to it, holding myself accountable, um, being able to bounce back from not making plays to opportunity knocking on my door and I kick the door down. Well, you got a chance to play against Clark Atlanta earlier this year, and turnovers were a big part of that, too. Did seeing this offense that Clark Atlanta has, did that make it maybe a little easier this time around? Um, not at all. We don't take no opponent lightly, no matter how many times we play them. Um, we came in with the mindset that this is a whole different team. We got to come prepared, ready to play, knowing that they're going to give us our, our best or their best shot. They still were able to move the ball a lot in the air. Was yeah. it a kind of a bend but don't break type of attitude that y'all had? Why were they still able to move it very well? Are they just that good? Tell me a little um, bit about what you saw. Definitely credit to, to Clark Atlanta. Um, can't can't underestimate them at all. Um, great opponent, great team, great coaches. Um, they just they had a game plan as well. Um, definitely a bend don't break attitude, especially down in the red zone. Definitely thinking bend don't break. Um, and it's all about the guys on that defense just going together. Now you won a championship. Everybody here can leave here saying I won one, yeah. but there's more in front of it, in front of this team. You know, talk about the opportunity that's next with the playoffs coming up. Um, for honestly, we've been we've been thinking, not saying that we was thinking ahead of Clark, but we've definitely been having our eyes on them playoffs. Um, we're not satisfied at all. We're looking for more. We want more. So as a team, we just got to stay hungry, stay consistent, stay disciplined, keep playing together. And another big game from Jeremiah Hudson Davis. One of the reasons why Miles is your SIAC champions in 2024. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right. The coach, Jeremiah, two picks today. Uh, he's been one of your guys who's been all over the field. And he may be another guy who quite didn't get what he should have gotten, but he's had an outstanding season and he certainly showed some of that today. Well, so proud of him coming off of literally having surgery on his hand like a month ago. And, and coming out getting two interceptions in the conference championship game, I think if he hadn't missed those three ball games from having a broke hand, I think he definitely would have been an all-conference guy for us. And he understands that. 
And, you know, we talk about the run game and as well as the, the you all ran the ball today, you had a big play that kind of set up one of your scores. It was a pass from Cam Ivory to Frank Pierre, big 45-yard play that flipped the field and, and put you real close before you were able to score again. Talk about the passing game, even though you didn't put up huge numbers, how important that was for you to be able to do everything else you did today. Well, I've been saying it all year. I, obviously, people know we're going to run the ball and they think we're a running team. But we're running the ball to set up the passing game. We're running the ball to get the coverages that we want, to get one-on-one -on -one coverage like they had on Frank Pierre on that play. And, and Cam did a good job of getting the ball to him. And Frank always does a good job of having strong hands, attacking the football and, and making plays. So it's not that we can't pass the ball and, and, and throw it around a lot, but our philosophy is a little bit different. We play complimentary football on offense. Well, you were able to get a rushing touchdown from Gennaro Scott early, and then you had Javante Leatherwood. He gets into the end zone not once but twice in the first half, including right there near the end of the half when it looked like momentum was starting to flip but just a little bit. You get the big interception from LaShawn, and then you bring it back down, and you go to the pass with Javante. Talk about that particular play. Well, you know, one of the things for us, we knew we couldn't take our foot off the gas with this team. Even we got up 23 to nothing, and, and before halftime, some people pro probably thought we were going to kind of sit on the ball, but playing against a, a team like Clark Atlanta, they're going to score a lot of points. And so when you get the ball, you got to be aggressive. And our game plan was to be aggressive with these guys. All right, and LaShawn, again, another big day for him. He gets his eighth interception, your defensive player of the year in the SIAC, leads the nation in that number. And, you know, again, we're talking about the turnovers force. Your guys just happen to be in the right spot, even as David Wright and, and company continue to attack, attack, attack. Right. Just, just, just hats off to our defense, our secondary. We got guys out there playing that have been banged up all year. Guys like Dunshay uh, Gaither. Uh, we got Malachi Oglin back last week. Still not 100%. Uh, Cam, Cam Williams is nursing a bad hand. And Jeremiah Hudson Davis. But those guys are playing, man. They're emptying the tank out there for us each and every game. And just proud of them. Well, Miles had a big lead at the half. And when we come back, we'll look at some of the second half highlights and see how Miles was able to close out this SIAC championship. You're watching Inside the Bears Den with Coach Sam Shade. Back here inside the Bears, Dan A. Moore, Sam Shade, SIAC championship game here. and It was an electric atmosphere. Talk a little bit about the juice that was in uh, Sloan Alumni Stadium this afternoon. Man, great atmosphere. All our fans came out. The alums came out. The student body. Just a great day for football. And, and Clark Atlanta brought a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Nine buses of fans came over from Atlanta for this ball game. So the SIAC definitely had a great conference championship game. It was like a heavyweight fight, man. It was it was exciting. Well, we were able to talk to Javante Leatherwood. We talked about his two touchdowns. He added another one in the second half, and we just talked about what he brings to this team as he continues to put touchdowns on the board. Javante Leatherwood, one of the big stars of the SIAC championship game. Not one, not two, but three touchdowns. And you've been a touchdown making machine all season long. You got 11 on the ground, 12 in total. Why are you so proficient at being able to put the ball in the end zone? You know, when it comes down to the end zone, like all out of my mind, I'm just thinking about just scoring, like, will like get in my way and he ain't gonna take me down. I ain't, I ain't stopping. So, but, but you got one today, you caught one in the air. They don't throw it to you a whole lot. Uh, were you a little surprised? That was a big score, too, as well, getting that, that reception. Yes, I, you know, I had to come in and make, um, yeah, make a big play and a big time play. You know what I'm saying? Four down. Yeah, I had to get it. This team has been very good on the ground all season long. It didn't really matter who Coach Shade put in there to run the football. You all were very good at being able to do it. Talk about overall how this team has been very good at moving the ball on the ground. 
you know, like in practice, you know, we preparing for the game, you know, the running backs, we practice super hard, like that like make us go like how we in the game, make it easy. You should see how how we work doing practice to fucking come up to this stage and yeah. So now you're a champion. Uh, when you came here, was was that the thought? Hey, I'm gonna be a champion right away, or actually, are you surprised? yeah. Before I got here, like on my mind, I was thinking, yeah, championship. Then I, I was thinking about national championship. I want to play for like national championship. That was my mind. Like even like January, if I even got here, like, I'm thinking I want to win national championship. That's all I'm thinking. Well, Javante Leatherwood was a big part of why Miles won an SIAC championship, and a national championship run gets to start next week. Thank you, Javante. Coach Javante, again, got in the end zone three times. He has now 11 on the ground, 12 on the season. And when you need somebody to kind of close the deal, man, Javante certainly is a guy who can step up and do it. Well, I think Clark Atlanta was just as surprised as I was <laughs> that we threw the ball to him right there because all, all his touchdowns have been on the ground. But uh, credit to him and, and, and Coach Stanley Connor, our running back coach, man, he's done a phenomenal job with that running back group. When you think we're playing six different running backs, we got a lot of guys playing and we're keeping them happy. And to throw throw the ball to Leatherwood and him make that play, that's that's awesome because we got some other backs that are a little bit better at catching it, but he did a great job of catching that touchdown. Well, as they continue to move the ball down the field, Miles still putting points up, but your defense is continuing to make turnovers. And more importantly, they were really starting to bring the heat to David Wright. And one of those guys who was doing that was Jermichael Rogers. We got a chance to talk with him and talk about how big it was to be able to bring the thunder to Mr. Wright. Here with defensive end, Jermichael Rogers and Jermichael you all were dominant from the word go today. Uh, talk about that first series because that set the tone, especially with being able to get that pressure in the backfield. You were up first getting that tackle for loss. Talk about wanting to be in that backfield early against Clark Atlanta. Uh, it was all about want to. You know, we came in this game with this attitude of we needed to win this game. Uh, we looked at Clark Atlanta as a different opponent. You know, we said, and we heard that, you know, you can't beat a team twice. So we just came in and we know we had to dominate from go. Now, you were second team all SIAC. You easily should have been the first team if you let me uh, kind of make that decision. But in that, was there a chip on your shoulder? Maybe a couple other guys who felt like, hey, man, we, we probably were a little better than where they picked us. Uh, of course, you know, me coming from what I came from and how I got to where I'm at now, Second team was really crazy to me, and you know, I did have a chip on my shoulder. So when I know I came out and proved the world wrong that I need to be first team, maybe ain't all American. Well, you certainly put punishment, you and your teammates, on David Wright, and that seemed to be the plan. Let's let's speed him up a little bit. Uh, talk a little bit about the pressure you all were able to put on him that probably was a big part of why you all had eight turnovers today. Uh, we know we just had to focus on one, you know. We feel as one was their offense, and we feel like if we can get enough hits on him and kind of get him roughed up a little bit, kind of take him out of the game, not in a bad way, but just, you know, get him out of his comfort zone. And I feel like we, if we did that successful, we can win the game, and it proved, proved us right. And, Jermichael, you know, you talked about not having the opportunity to even play for a championship in all the years you played football. Now you look up at the scoreboard, 53-25 was the final, and you're a champ for the first time. How does that feel? Oh man, it just feel amazing, man, from just being able to come from where I come from, man, to just work and work and work to get to where I'm at right now, man. It's just like a dream come true, you know. Like I said before, you know, never won anything before. This is my first championship ever, man. Just very excited. Well, it's a good reason to be excited. First mm -hmm. championship here at Miles since 2019, and Jermichael Rogers was a big part of that. We appreciate you joining us on the show. Thank you, thank you. And, and Coach, we had talked a little bit about it before the break, and Jermichael playing with that chip on his shoulder, but it wasn't just him. It was your entire front seven that was really bringing the heat, man. They, they had to pull David Wright from this game a couple of times, the way they were putting the hits on him. Uh, talk about your plan in attacking him. Well, we had to get after him. We, we, we knew plain and simple. We could not play a game where we set back, zone coverage, just, you know, rushing three or four guys. We had to put pressure on him because we saw early in the ball game, uh, he was able to make some plays when we gave him time to make plays. So we really tried to put a lot of pressure on him. Well, as he continued to throw the ball, 
Miles continued to make plays. One of the guys they were just kind of going at was Josh Ruff, and we've talked about him and how he converted from offense to defense. But he finally got his chance today, man, as they continue to go out of, after him. Josh makes a play right here in this end zone right behind us and stopped another drive. Man, talk about Josh stepping up to the challenge today. So proud of him. He, he, he's one of those guys. We, we've been talking about guys stepping up all year. Khalil Ang was stepping up at quarterback and the running backs and just all our guys that have stepped up. But Ruff stepped up and went on the other side of the ball from offense to defense during a season. That, that's hard to do. Most, most of the time, if you're going to take a guy from offense to defense, you do it in the off season so you can really lay a foundation. So proud of him. And they were, you know, I, I don't blame them for going after a guy that, that was playing receiver about two months ago. Don't blame him at all, uh, but a credit to uh, Coach Langham, who works with our corners a lot, credit to him, the work he's done developing the Josh Rush in a short period of time. And again, they continued to put the pressure on, and, and David Wright just kept throwing them. And then you, you score a touchdown, and then you turn around, and you get another one on the kickoff, and, and you, you score some more points. And, you know, eight turnovers, Coach, that doesn't happen. And, much any game, but to see it happen in a championship game, that's huge. Well, all season long, our keys to victory, winning the turnover battle has been one of our keys to victory every single ball game. And the guys, they work at it. Uh, defensively, we work at it, we talk about it, we stress it, we watch film, and we, we talk about it for guys gonna carry it loose and we got a chance to make something happen. And, and, and so it's coached. I mean, it is truly coached. It's, it's, it's not luck. It's just guys playing hard and taking the practice to the game. Well, one of those guys who was able to get their hands on a couple of these footballs was Cam Williams. He was one of those guys playing a little bit of chip on his shoulder, too. He's second team all conference. He had two interceptions to go with that second team. We got to talk to Cam. This is what he had to say after the ball game. Cam Williams, Mr. Pass breakup in the SIAC, but today you were pulling them in. You got a couple. Yeah. Uh, ends up being big. You all forced eight turnovers, six interceptions. You are already one of the top teams in the country and going after the ball. Why were you all able to be so good doing that this afternoon against Clark Atlanta? Um, it's just pretty simple. We uh, we practice real hard, so in order for us to for it to come easy on the game day, we got to we compete against each other. We feel like we the best. We got the best offense, best defense, so we go really hard at practice. So today it just felt like we said seven interceptions. We started it off, we said we want seven interceptions, or seven turnovers today, but we ended up getting eight turnovers, so. And, and you all were able to come out and you got that turnover right away to be able to get into the end zone. You're also tops in the country in turning uh, turnovers into touchdowns. What's the mindset there for you guys once you get your hands on the ball? Uh, our, our D coordinator, our head coach, they put in our head that we need to score on defense at least two times. We felt like that was a bit much, but once we started doing it, we kept working hard. Now we just feel like we need to get more, more and more. So You all were so close last year to being able to get a chance to get into the championship game. Now that you make it here and now that you win, uh, is, is it all worth it? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very worth it. Uh, we, uh, we started getting player-led, we became more disciplined, and we, we came together as a team. Early on in the, uh, the SIAC run, we came together, we had a little player means and stuff, and then we just took off from there. Now we're the champs. Cam is one of the best in the country at getting his hands on the football. He's certainly top 25 in passes defended in Division II, and he showed why today with those two interceptions, and now he's an SIAC champion. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, man, appreciate you. Coach, I know you like the way Cam stepped up. You talked about he's been nursing a little bit of an injury, but to be able to get his hands on two interceptions, that gives him three on the year. Uh, and it just was a, a complete team effort uh, up front in the back end of, the, of your defense. Just, I'm, I'm sure you're more than ecstatic with their effort today. Very, just, just like you said, great team effort on defense. Up front, the, the second level, the linebackers, uh, William Hardy, Yafondo, just, just across the board, I'm, I'm so proud of, of our young student athletes and just the way they came out here and fought because, like I said, respect to Clark Atlanta. They, they came out here with a good game plan and they came out here on a mission. They wanted to win this thing just as bad as our guys and we found a way to get it done.
Well, Miles does get it done. 53-25 is your final score. Miles wins the SIAC championship again for the fifth time in seven trips to the championship game. That's the most in, among any school in this league since they started that championship game back up in 2011. We're going to take one more break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about all conference. And, Coach, I believe we've got another game coming up, and we'll talk about that too. Absolutely. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching Inside the Bears then with Coach Sam Shade. Back inside the Bears Den with Coach Sam Shade, A.A. Moore, and Coach, uh, before you even got to this championship ball game, the SIAC released its all-conference team, first and second team. Miles had the most players on the first team and on the team, as you might expect. When you go 8-2 and two in the conference, you have nine players that earn all-conference recognition. We'll call their names out. Tight end Trevante Abner was first team all-conference, as was your two of your offensive linemen, Christian Twyman, as well as Jason Stovall. You got Rock Dowdell was also first team all-conference, as was LaShawn Young at the defensive back position. In the second team, you had running back Gennaro Scott, you also had defensive lineman uh, Jamichael Rogers. You had safety, excuse me, cornerback Cam Williams, who made the second team as well. And one more guy who was on the second team, William Hardy, the linebacker William Hardy. second team. And I'm standing next to, as we mentioned at the top of the show, coach of the year, Sam Shade. And, uh, you know, your guys just did a lot of wonderful things. We talked about LaShawn Young. He was the defensive player of the year. But also, you got Trevante Abner. He won the SIAC Elite 16 award, which it stresses academics at 3.75 GPA, tops amongst the championship performers here today. So Miles cleaned up just shows the overall uh, depth of your program and just the whole overall product is, is working at a high level in a lot of places. It is, it is. And, uh, you know, obviously um, all these guys have put in hard work not just this season, but since they've been here. And, and they're seeing the, few, the fru fruits of their labor. They're really seeing it, and uh, I'm, I'm happy for them. And I think that they're champions on the field, but with the things that they're gonna take from being here at Miles College and being a part of this football program, they're gonna be champions in life. And, I, and I, that's, that's the thing that you want most, but excited about the championship. Well, the SIAC championship, they certainly have that, and you can't take that away. But you've got another championship that's coming up, and that's the NCAA Division II championship. Miles came into this ball game at number six. Knowing a win keeps you in. A loss was going to make it a little sketchy, but you're in. You're going to get in. Yes. Now the question is, how far up the rankings do you move when they release the team? And then do you get to host a home game? How do you feel about your, your chances in this playoff? I, I, think, I think when they look at our full body of work, having the nine Division II wins – and only one Division One loss. I, I feel like we've done enough to put ourselves in position to move up into the top four in our super region, to put us in a position to host a home, host a home playoff game next week. And excited and looking forward to tomorrow, seeing the uh, selection uh, committee uh, do what they're going to do. All right. When this show comes out, we'll know where we're playing, and we'll be able to let you know where we're playing. Just go to milesgoldenbears.com, and you'll be able to get all the information on where we're playing, who we're playing, and how you can watch us play. Hopefully, we're somewhere close where you can come on out and cheer us on. We really don't want to hit the road. A home game would be the first time in Golden Bears history that they hosted a playoff game here at Sloan Alumni Stadium. So, Coach, man, y'all been stacking all of the firsts and, and doing everything at a top level here in 2024. And, and, you know, all I can say is congratulations to you and your program as we get ready to move forth into the playoffs. I want to say to you too, A.A., hey, man, really appreciate you, man. Hey, the ultimate professional, man, behind this microphone and the voice of the Bulldogs. 
the, the voice of the uh, Golden Bears. One of these Bears. teams. <laughs> yeah, voice of the Golden Bears, man. We really appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you, Coach. I appreciate this team. It's always fun when you win. It's not near as fun as when you lose, but you always are pouring into this program somehow, some way. And so I just try to do my part, and I appreciate you helping me. Now, basketball is on tap coming up on Saturday. First conference games of the season. Miles will host Albany State at Knox Wyndham Gymnasium. Tip-off for the women is at one. The men will play at three. Uh, I may be here. I may not. I don't know how this is going to work, man. They really are driving me crazy, Coach. But it's okay. You all come on out, cheer on the Lady Bears and the Golden Bears, and cheer on this football team as they continue their run now towards a national championship. We thank you for joining us here inside the Bears Den. A.A. Moore, Coach Sam Shade. Thank you all, and we'll see you next week.